Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. We're here on an early morning to do a beautiful review for you today on a unique product. When I first saw this, it looked very enticing, very cool. And now that I've got it in, I've got some opinions on it. This is the Fit Bench One. And if you can't tell it yet, it's essentially a weight bench that harnesses storage with inside so you can use it for all different things. And originally this is designed for commercial applications. And to be honest, I think it really is best for commercial applications and I'll get into why. That said, I have noticed and we have heard that quite a few home gym owners are into these simply because it combines in a small platform, small amount of space, a lot of different usage. And so before I get into kind of my opinions and like the actual review, I wanna show you kind of how it works. Let's do it. Okay, so I'll start down at this end. The biggest question would probably be like, how do you freaking move this big boy around? And the reality is they've made it pretty easy. They put casters here on the back. These can be used if you lift the bar on the front. The problem is if you have weight in here, you really can't do that. This entire thing, weighs around 225 pounds. And then I think there's an additional 275 pounds or so of weight that comes with the Fit Bench One. Because of that, you're basically moving a, you know, 500 pound plus <laughs> bench. That's very hard. So the casters have to be like super stout. These are very nice, they're stout. This is a commercial product, these are stout. But the ones on the front also have to be because you don't move it like you would like a dolly, you move it as if it's just laying flat. And the way that's done is on this side. And so on this side, there's basically these buttons here that you use to unlock and lock the casters. They do not work extremely smoothly with the weight in here. It's just kind of difficult. You have to lift up and like fit your foot in here to unlock it. Not a huge deal, but I have had trouble like getting my toe in there enough to do it. But now, as you can see, because it's very stable, it's locked in place. And then if I want to unlock it, I press this button here and that button here, and then now it's able to move. And so it's not designed like for any set any land speed records, but for moving around the house or moving around the gym, it does that very well. Next are anchor points. This is designed to be used with bands, with battle ropes, anything that you could attach to something. And so they're using the weight of this base as like a firm foundation to then do other exercises off of, which is very smart. So having a lot of anchor points is a great thing because then you can work on multiple sides of the bench. And this comes with bands inside that you then attach these two here. And due to the weight of it, around 500 pounds, you're gonna be able to pull on this sucker as hard as you want. Or battle ropes, you can attach a battle rope here and do that as much as you want as well. But on this side is when we start getting into the actual equipment that's on here. So first are kettlebells. The, this is designed as like a functional training piece, which means they're using functional training equipment, which means free weights. So they're using things like kettlebells, dumbbells, bands, slam ball, that sort of thing. That includes an 18 pound kettlebell, 30 pound kettlebell, which by the way, like these are very much a commercial feeling kettlebell and product. They're not cast iron. They have like a chrome handle, feel like a normal kettlebell, but they also have like this probably urethane covering, which just feels like a little bit, I don't know, nicer than cast iron. I don't think it's necessary, but it is nice because it's not gonna mar and scar both your machine here and this. Now, here in the middle are dumbbells, and you're seeing this side, but the exact same like setup is on the other side for the other increments. They provide dumbbells from five pounds up to 30 pounds in five pound increments. So we got five, 10s, 15s, 20s, 25s, and 30s. 30s on the base, smart how they did this. They put the heavier ones on the bottom. They also made them so the gun racks of sorts has some sort of plastic so that when you're taking these out and putting them back in, your hand is able to fit inside, but it's also able to protect the knurling. And that's the other thing is like these dumbbells are very nice. The handles on these is a straight knurled handle, which is kind of surprising for a product that honestly is marketed towards more general consumers because most general consumers are used to a dumbbell that has that bulbous shape. So it's like, you know, 
comes out, there's no in the middle. This feels much more like a barbell, which personally I prefer. I like a straight handle. It's the reason I have a Laco dumbbells over there because I just like using a straight handle. It's what I use on a barbell. I want to practice like I play, and that's why I use these. But these are a very nice dumbbell. They are a hex head, but they're like, I think it's a urethane coated head rather than like just standard rubber. They're gonna last a long time and they're very well done. On the front here, we have yet again more storage. So on this side, we have a slam ball. Again, another functional training piece. This is a 15 pound slam ball. You can use it for anything you use a slam ball for. And the very nice thing is when you're done with it, shove it back in. Now, the top, this is a polyurethane top. Very similar to what we see on the new Rogue Adjustable Bench 3.0 premium pad top. One of the reasons the pad's nice is because it's very high density, which means it provides a lot of stability, but also provides some cushion if you miss a box jump or a step up. I love this type of padding for box jumps. So, and you can see the sucker is really stable because it has all the weight in it. And then you lock the casters down. I mean, it's not really going anywhere. And then you can use it for step ups, box jumps. You can use it for squats, one leg squats. All sorts of things like that. Even box squats, although it's a little bit high for that, unless you're a quarter squatter. Now, this doesn't just do flat bench. It also does incline. Watch this. That's pretty cool. So the fact that it can go up and do incline, lock in into a ladder style system, that is numbered. It'd be nice if these were laser cut. It'd also be nice if this showed degrees, although the market they're selling this to probably doesn't care that much, I understand. but it would be nice for some people. So this locks in into eight different increments. So you can do all sorts of inclines and you can hear this gas shock here, which is a really high quality gas shock that when dropped is actually soft close. So it'll stop and then slowly close, which is what you see in like, say nicer cabinets. So very like nice user friendly. You're not gonna drop it on your hand. Smart design, I'm really glad they added that in. But they didn't just like take away some wasted space. No, they added things in the middle. So this is used as a battle rope storage. So I've got a battle rope in here. The one that comes with it is sleeved. It's got a Dacron rope inside. It's a very nice rope. It also comes with bands, fit bands. So these are things you can attach with handles to all the anchor points. And if you had other things like say other bands or foam roller or just other small things that you wanted to fit in, you could fit in in here. This locks in with rollers, by the way, on the edges, roller bushings, which is smart and then grip handles. And then this locks in over here. And if you wanted to, you probably could lock this in somehow so that nobody could get into it. So this entire bench here is made using cold rolled steel and it's using 12 gauge steel. Now what most home gym owners are used to seeing is like what's behind me. That's an 11 gauge rack. The smaller the number on the gauge, the thicker the steel. So 12 gauge, although sounds bigger, is similar to golf. It's actually thinner steel than what we see on 11 gauge. This has a maximum weight rating of 750 pounds, which is enough for most people. Now you have to factor in 225 bench to 75 pound weights, which equals total 500 pounds. So that means you gotta be 250 pounds or less basically while you're using this. <laughs> so for most people, this is gonna be fine. Like we've tested weight ratings many times. It's always can take much more than that. Now, let me give you my opinion. First off, this thing is pricey. This is not a cheap device. Honestly, some of you, when I throw out this price, you're probably gonna throw up. It's right around 2,895 bucks plus another 400, $500 shipping. So like we're talking three grand area, which is very expensive. I do wanna say this is initially and foremost designed for commercial applications. So like that's their market. It's designed to meet that need and it's designed to see a lot of use. It is very high quality. Like this top is very high quality. The way the logo is embedded, the dumbbells, the kettlebells, the battle rope, it feels like a premium piece, mostly. I say mostly because that's one of my critiques is there are some things about it that does feel like it could be improved. Like I love the gas shock, super well done. But the use of the stickers here, it's like, man, why not just laser cut that in there? Like the price is there, like I think it could be done. In addition to that, they've got like this car decal here, but when ours showed up, this was like half off there like that. Like I'm sure Fitbench is proud of their brand and their logo. So a 
better application than just like a car decal sticker, I think would be a better representation. And it's obvious they like the brand because they put it on all the dumbbells and logos too. The other thing is for that price, you're only going up to 30 pounds. So for most people that are into strength training, like true strength training, it's not gonna be enough. They have a version of this, which I would actually recommend more and prefer more for most home gym owners. And that is one that features adjustable dumbbell cradles. I use them at Ursa, are freaking sick. So they sit in here, they turn out, and then they allow you to pull it out. They used an MX55, but it could work with power blocks. It's just a square platform. Could probably work with new bells too. Just a cool way they implemented using adjustable dumbbells and taking them out. The other thing is the height of this bench. It's 20 inches. The IPF standard for a like a weight bench, one you'd use in powerlifting, one people are most used to for benching is 17 inches, which means it's three inches taller. Sounds like no big deal, but when you get on it, like I'm not super tall, I'm around 5'10". My feet, my toes like feels like I'm kind of like on too tall of a toilet, you know what I mean? Like you just feel kind of uncomfortable. That's how this bench feels. And if this is designed for just a general consumer market, it means that everybody's gonna be using it from tall to short. So it can feel a little bit unique in that way. The other thing is it is an incline bench, but there's no seat for incline. So you're using it like this for incline. Personally, I don't mind that because I use a Sornex Bulldog pad all the time, which has a similar feel. There's no like seat pad, but it is something to be aware of because a lot of people are used to incline, you know, having a seat to use on. And then the bench, due to how like wide it has to be for the stability of the bench so it doesn't tip over, is also kind of wide. It's wider than what we see on a like a Thompson Fat Pad, which is what I'm used to benching on, which can lead to like your arms kind of feels in some ways like you're benching on the floor at times unless you really flare your elbows, which then leads to probably improper bench form. So there's some gives and takes in every product, regardless of what product it is, there has to be some things that are positive and negative. And so these are some of the things that they've had to add or take away in order to make this like a viable product. So do I recommend the Fit Bench? Well, <laughs> It's hard to recommend because it's so expensive. If you're looking for something that's all in one and you don't need a squat rack or you have a squat rack that's separate and you want this, it could work. But this isn't something that you roll into a squat rack and then use. It's just not designed for that. It's not gonna work well for that. So this is for somebody that like, this is the max weight you think you're gonna use. You wanna do more hit style training. You're not looking into like true heavy strength training, like 30 pounds is the max you wanna use. You just wanna get like a good workout. There's a lot here in a compact form. I love the idea of like, how can we maximize the amount of things we do in a small space? But with the price point and like the max weight on here and things like that, this isn't a product I'd recommend for like the general consumer that's looking for like a good budget play because this definitely isn't it. However, what they've done, I'm glad they didn't take shortcuts on some stuff because things like that hinge, whoo, just that extra nice premium. Okay, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. What do you think of the Fit Bench? Is this something you'd ever be interested in? Let me know in the comments. We'll see you next time.